Hello everybody, welcome to Live Scribbles with Jonathan. You can check out my website and my work at jonathanrector.com and uh, we're going to jump right into it today. Why, why waste time? So, first, how's everybody doing? I hope you guys are doing well. Uh, I want to say r as well, thank you. Uh, I've had a few people actually reach out, reach out to me this week uh, on Facebook. Uh, I had a couple emails. Uh, people, that they're asking some, um, I want to say some, some, some real talk questions, you know, just sort of like, just stuff, just art stuff, uh, and uh, I'm. If you are listening, those of you that did uh, reach out to me, I hope I was able to help in some way. Um, even if I, I try not to come off too like, like an asshole, right? I, I don't want to. If people are asking for help, I don't want to make it sound or, or try to sound like I'm superior in any way. Uh, you know, asking artists that you look up to, or people that you think may be able to teach you something. Um, being willing to actually go ahead and, and ask for that help is, is a monumental feat uh, that I think a lot of people are um, hesitant, scared, or possibly don't see the value in, in potentially getting a response. Like an honest response, not, not trying to fish for like, can you get me work? Can you show me my stuff to people, right? I'm talking like legit, I need some help because where I'm at right now, uh, you know, I feel like I'm plateauing or I, I, there's a wall that I can't get over. So anyway, thank you so much. Um, so those of you that did ask, and again, I really do hope that uh, at least helped you a little bit. And great, it's good to hear that a bunch of you guys in the chat are doing well. So what are we doing today? Let me just delete all this stuff. Uh, the pre-show was a little lame today. We were just really just, you know, I didn't have much time uh, before I got home to really do anything. So what we're doing today is I thought, and this is, um, I've been sort of doing this in the background. Uh, what I'm doing is I have a, a very, it's big for my area for a comic book convention, but it's it's very small in the terms of just comic conventions in general. Uh, but here in Windsor, Ontario, Canada, we have the Christmas convention coming up uh, just for the Sunday of this weekend here. So I'm going to actually upload this video possibly tonight or tomorrow. And uh, for those of you that I know there are a few people from Windsor that do watch and stuff like that. But uh, anyway, what I wanted to do is I, last the last con that I had, and it's sort of cool because I get to talk to you guys about it. Um, because as many conventions that I've been to, and there hasn't been too many, usually I'm behind the booth. Uh, you know, just drawing for people or signing comics and stuff like that uh, for books that I've done, which is great. But I'd like to break that comfort zone a little bit and just have a booth myself. And I know a lot of you are already doing that, so congratulations for having the balls and the, the guts to, to even do it. Uh, for me, the, the question I've always run into is, well, what, what, do, I, <laughs> what do I try to, the, to sell, right? And uh, the last convention that I had, it was a very small one, was just prints. And it taught me quite a bit. Um, you know, and showed me different, it's a different side of doing a lot of stuff, right? So this one, I haven't had much time to change anything. And uh, the audience I know going to this convention is going to be pretty much geared for comic books. Whereas the last one I felt was um, foreshadowed by a, a, another convention that happened, as well as it was sort of tied in like a family show. So uh, it wasn't necessarily the kind of con that I would like to go when I'm trying to sell comic books, prints, and that kind of stuff, right? So this new one coming up, uh, I want to have something other than just prints. Uh, so there's two things that I'm, I'm hoping to get, and I'm trying to wrap it up this week, last minute. That's the way we like to do it, right? <laughs> and uh, so what we're doing is we're going to have a convention sketchbook, and I think it's a wonderful idea. I've seen other people do it, and this will sort of be a test bed to see how it works and how all that happens. But I'd like to have a yearly... Um, convention sketchbook that I can bring to cons around my area, right? Um, so this first one will be for 2014, 2015, next year, 15, 16, that kind of stuff. And it's uh, so far it's uh, looking to be about 40 pages, and it'll be mini comic size. Uh, so figure 8.5 by 11, that size piece of paper, like a regular printer piece of paper, and fold that, into half, fold that in half, and that would be the size. So you guys can actually if you wanted to, I do this all the time. Grab a piece of paper right now, fold it in half, and, and you can sort of feel feel it, and that's the, that's the size it'll be. Uh, what's that, Michael? Like? When is RectorCon? I don't know. I don't know. We're, <laughs> we're still working on Remember, we were all going to do like an online Facebook con uh, when there's like San Diego Comic Con and stuff like that, and you can't people can't go to it, uh, so you have like an online sort of things like that. So we're going to work on a sketchbook. Uh, I've got pretty much everything that's going to be in the book already set aside. It's going to be a lot of like pinups that I've done throughout the year. Uh, but I also want to have like some sketchy stuff in there, like process. Very, very little. I don't. Want, it's not a. It's not a verbose or a highly published printed. It's not like the first art book I did. And that thing was like 250 
pages. That was a graphic novel. That that taught me a whole bunch. And I'm not ready to go down that route at all. Um, but for those of you that are watching, don't worry. I know some of you are interested in this sort of thing. So I will obviously have some uh, if you don't live in Windsor and you'd like to order one online. Uh, I'll be able to take care of you guys that way too. So what we're going to do today is uh, we're going to cover and we need a cover for this thing, right? And I was scratching my head all day. I'm like, what do we do? Some people just have like a cute little character, a little face or something. And I'm just trying to go, I don't want it. Don't, it doesn't have to be anything massive. It's just a sketchbook, right? It's not, it, it hopefully draws attention and it's interesting. Uh, but when it comes to sketchbooks and art books, I find, not at art books, actually, that, that doesn't count. For sketchbooks, when I'm, I'm looking, if it's an artist I follow, I'm really into their stuff, so I'll probably get it regardless. But if I don't know somebody's stuff, it's usually the style of art that's going to grab me, right? So what we're going to do with this one is I'm trying to figure out, like, okay, well, what, do I, what am I going to have on here? What are the characters that I, you know, like, what's 2016 looking like? What are we trying to do? Where's, where's all that stuff going? And we all know that I'm pushing in the background to get Jessup King off the ground. And so Jessup King, I want to have him on the cover. And then I started thinking, well, you know, like, we have Castle Dracula, right? I don't want that to fall off the wayside, too. I still love these characters. So what these are, if you can quickly just kind of see these in the thumbnail versions of them. The black version here is uh, Jessup from Jessup King. And the blue one will be Gildas from Castle Dracula. I'm trying to figure out which one would be a cool, cool image. And I just sort of have placeholders up here as well for text and all that sort of stuff. Uh, don't worry, <laughs> Unsung, I I won't hurt you, but I won't hurt you. Michael, you like the bottom middle one? It's a, di uh, it's a pretty classic shot. I can see like a Captain America with the chest chest sticking out. Um, we have um, Momo over here on the side too. Honestly, what I'm thinking is, is this one right here, the first one. Uh, what I can do in here, and sort of what I'm, he's kind of got like a Omega Red thing going on here, but I could sort of have it like Gildas is attacking them, like he's jumping up from behind these two guys, and they're just getting ready to like, oh god, you know, like something's about to happen. Now the only thing I'm concerned with that one is there's a lot of, I don't, know, I don't know. You guys, let me know which one you think. If the, one of them actually pops out in your head. So far we got uh, here. Let me number them. Really sloppy writing. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? So we've already got to vote for six. Uh, I'm leaning towards one myself. Um, we got two for six. And to be fair, I will say this as well, six out of all of these is probably the simplest one to do. Save for two. Two's actually, they're, two's probably the simplest one, six very close, because it's just a generic shot, kind of looking up and stuff like that. Um, uh, Justin's got number seven. See, so this is always where the tricky part goes, right? And I don't really like acting on impulse with this sort of stuff, but it's the name of the game. Doing comic books, guys. Time is of the F essence. What is happening on number one? So number one, let me zoom in a little bit here. Maybe that'll help you guys out. So in the first one here, it would sort of be like, uh, here would be Jessup with his chest to us, sort of looking over behind him. You know, like that normal shot. Same with Momo. She's doing the same thing. And we've got Gildas behind, jumping at them with his dual whips like he's getting the jump on them getting ready to attack number two we just got uh, Jessup here with his fist up uh, classic shot I do all the time what, check out my Galactus pic it was a bunch of pictures I got this uh, Gildas is there they're both kind of looking cool uh, yeah sorry Momo is the octopus and I know you guys you guys will learn these characters as I draw them more and share them with you I'm talking as if you guys know this all the way right <laughs> uh, number three is just them trying to like a bird's eye view looking down just trying to have a little action there number four is very similar to two just pulled uh out a little bit more so we can see them five is just jessup and momo just sort of relaxing as some birds are flying over top of them and i know a lot of people aren't going to go for that uh even though i think if you appreciate indie comics or manga uh, these little like i don't want to say intimate moments but the slow moments the in between the action stuff where you get to find out about the character they're actually very sweet you know and they're very um endearing and they also talk a lot about the character because as much as I love superheroes and I love them to death the reason why I love the Hulk so much is he smashes the ever living shit out of everything right right but at the same time there's the Bruce Banner part where there's you can see him on the train uh, hiding just in the darkness sitting in an abandoned place just peeing away from people and there's those moments where he's just like you know it looks like he's got a headache with his hand just because he's thinking how do I stop 
from being me. Those are the moments that carry. So it's once they unleash, you know, like it's uh, it means more. So these kinds of shots, I don't. Again, I don't know if they're good for or well suited to get eye catching attention, which I don't think it does. So it's poor, it's sort of like this won't ever. This I can just do this right now. This won't get picked for sure. Six. Uh, it's just them kind of us looking up at them a little bit. And I don't want to go too drastic with the angle on that one. I'm able to see the faces because it's very important. And number seven is them sort of just like leaping into action on the side of like a mountain or something like that. Octopus or jellyfish? I don't know. It's like a mix of both. She's got a j more jellyfish than octopus, but she's got the octopus tentacles. I don't even know. I really don't even know. It's an alien, so it's whatever. <laughs> Are the birds actually space pterodactyls and one of them just a big one? Uh, this would be a cover. A jelly puss. There you go. That actually sounds like jelly puss. <laughs> I think we're gonna. Oh man, you guys got me thinking about sick. Uh, <laughs> you know what? I'm thinking. I'm gonna go with you guys. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go with the room here. We're gonna do number six, and I'll, I'll talk about why I'm gonna do six. I'm not try to talk too much. So one I'm thinking is great. I'm thinking if I walk up to a, a guy's booth and the guy's like, yo, you know, check out my stuff. So I go, okay, bro, I'll check out your stuff. And I'm looking on the table. And number one, one feels like a comic book cover. But it's not a comic book, which is the other side of it. Number one makes me want to flip it and see what happens to these characters, for sure. Number six is sort of just like, okay, here's some dudes. I have no idea who they are. Thanks, Saint. And I'll just, uh, I don't know if you're going to stick around or not, but uh, I, I dig the Ken. Awesome. Anyway, so <laughs> number six has just, it's like some guys and some things, right? So six hopefully will showcase or highlight the detail like we're kind of talking about, uh, what Michael was talking about. And um, it's probably the best interest. So I'll go ahead and use, I'll take your guys' word on this one. So we got our file here. I'm just going to make a selection around our, our uh, thumbnail, copy, paste. And we're just going to move this over here, get it away, turn this one off. Now, this one here, the next step I'll do, actually, screw it. Let's sort of just place everything. <clears throat> I want to make sure Jessup is pretty much prominent here. Uh, we'll bring it up. I don't know how much room or even what text is taking up there, so those are just idea boxes, really, of where text is probably going to go. Um, I'm just going to rotate it here, do a little dance, Let's see if we can straighten it up a little bit. Okay. So I'm going to put that in its own folder. I'll call this one Thumbs. We'll do a little F3 action. All right, we'll turn that off there. And the next step here is we're just going to go ahead and grab, uh, let's see how big this brush is. Rough's deadline, what is that? Okay, so this is actually a brush that I've been farting around with. It's pretty much just dead. <laughs> and what really sucks is I can't go in there and do some like, sometimes if you guys notice, what I like to do is I'll, I'll start to sketch like this, right? Like when I'm doing like a hand, we'll say, right? And I can kind of get thick and then kind of like sort of figure this out as I'm scribbling it in. Um, but what happens is it starts to get really, I don't say artsy, but it starts to get like there's a little bit extra detail in there. And at this stage, it's not ready for that. This stage is, this right here is the idea that we've kind of agreed on that we're going to do. But now we need it to tighten it up just a little bit, okay? So this next stage is still, I've been using this thick, gross brush because that starts to get some more solid placement. Uh, for what we're doing. So let's see if we can get in here. And I'm just sort of hacking in anatomy. I don't want to go too crazy here because it's not appropriate for it. Jessup's kind of got a much smaller waist here, but he's got like a pretty massive upper chest. And I don't know how much of their legs we're going to do because I don't know how much is going to get caught up with text. in there for now.
flip it here so you can see what's going on. Actually, we should bring this other arm up here. So his upper body is actually as big as it is. It's not big enough. So we can already see what we're going to need to do. We're going to have to start adjusting the sizes of things. Because if I don't work for Marvel and I can't draw the Hulk, <laughs> I'm going to do my best to make my characters the Hulk, right? So let's just sort of shrink this up a little bit. Because we're gonna, because Gildas is as well, right? He's a he's a pretty massive character too. So, and we're gonna tighten the anatomy up and stuff like that. Again, this is just tighter placement of what's what's going where and what's going to be where it should be. Um, just place placeholders, right? So let's make a new layer. Uh, it's always good to make layers on this sort of stuff. I, I do encourage you guys, if you guys are interested in working like this too, is um, changing your colors up. And you'll see why uh, in a second here. So I'm just going to actually lower the opacity on Jessup just so he's still there so I can see it because I need that, that angle here. And this will make it a little tricky because, like I've already said, Gildas is actually... He's very close to just being Jessup, to be honest with you. There's not that much about him that's too, too different. And you can see once we start getting this many cats on here, it's just starting to get real gross. Hey, Madara. Definitely need to be able to see his the whip that he's got too, right? So maybe we can have a hand in the front here. Right. So this is a, I just want to show you why it's it's very powerful to have the colors going with these characters like this. Uh, when we turn the roughs off, you can see where things are, right? So from here, what you can do is you can just like start adjusting sizes and stuff. It's uh. If there was, I've said it before, other people have definitely said it. If there's one thing that digital gets or lets you do is this. And why I think everybody should incorporate this in their workflow. And print this out on regular garbage piece of paper and tape the back for frick's sakes of just like an 11 by 7, like get two eight and a half by. So let me just show this because I think some of you guys get confused when I talk about this. So if you're working in comics, American comics, North American comics. This is the ratio, 11 by 17 piece of Bristol, right? If you divide this in half, each one of these is eight and a half by 11 pieces of paper turned sideways, okay? So knowing that, all you do is you make an 11 by 17 document like we've got, cut it in half with your marquee tool, right? And print out each chunk, and then just tape the back once you print them out, and you can light box that. And you can put it up to your window. You can do all kinds of things. But what I'm trying to say is just being able to do this right here, I'll show you. Just moving this guy around like this is massive. Just going like, I don't know if I like this guy here, if I want him up here. Maybe I can, you know, what if, does he look better like this? Like, look how fast we can do edits like this, right? So fast. And just being able to print this out. And I, I do think that there's a little bit of a, not as much anymore, but I do hear from some people. And I, I do want to say there. Uh, this will make me probably sound like an asshole, but they're a little stubborn when it comes to this, where it's like, no, traditional only, and like, I can still do all that work, you know. I, I understand all of that, but it just please try it. <laughs> try it at least with a few things that you're doing. That's all. Um, Michael, uh, what kind of comics did you like? Were you a fan of pulp posters with descriptions of the movies in the poster? Uh, the kind of comics that I... When I grew up, uh, uh, the first comic that I got, I talked about it before, was uh, the Jim Jim Lee's run on X Men. Uh, the cover was, I don't know, they were like twenty five cents. They were they were selling so many of them. Ridiculous, just absolutely ridiculous. And I remember I bought like three or four of them, uh, and I thought it was just cool. I I, I fell into knowing about uh, what's it called, the X Men from the cartoon show to be honest. And from there, it went, like, Ninja Turtles was before that. I remember I was reading, I think it was The Adventures of, like, the kids' version, which was really awesome. It was a great comic. 
And uh, a lot of it was just TV shows. And then going in from there. And then eventually my mom took me once to a comic book store. And I asked if I could get a book called Spawn. I don't even know what issue. Greg Capullo was drawing it at the time for sure. And it was before. I don't even know if any of you guys remember this. Before Al Simmons got his, his face back. Uh, it was all still like the uh, maggoty kind of things like that. But I don't know what it was that made me get that comic. I think the art was so detailed. It just it didn't look like any other book that was out there. And when I was flipping through the page, the the pages of the book, the the paper just felt so wow. Like it felt nice. Like this was this was high quality. It just felt like quality to my feeble little kid mind. Right? It didn't matter. Um, so from there, I just kept bugging my mom if I go once a month to pick up a, a comic. And I usually I. I just got Spawn, 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 Spawn. A buddy of mine, I got him to go, and he uh, he was a Christian. Not that it has anything to do. No, it was a Catholic. Christian, I believe. Not that it has anything to do with this, but it's kind of funny. He would buy Captain America. <laughs> Captain America's a great... Love that love that character, too. Uh, and he would always... We'd bring the books back to his house when his parents were away. Because <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if they really... They were okay with him reading comics as long as it was like... I don't know. He just had really religious parents. Anyway, so he would always beg me to read Spawn. So I would let him read it, and I'd be reading Captain America this way too, right? And I was like, oh, this guy's so cool. I think Liefeld was actually drawing it, and I, st- I still love it. I-, I know some people don't like his art, whatever. But I remember there was a few times that he'd be reading Spawn, and his parents would pull up in the driveway, and right away it was like, Phew! we had to hide the Spawn comic, because that was Satan's book, right? You can't have Satan's book. <laughs> it was amazing. Uh, but from there, like it sort of started dwindling away. I got more into like video game art and stuff like that. Uh, it really wasn't until Battle Chasers came out that I was really okay. Comics are are really cool, and it's something that I'm very interested in doing. Um, and, and it went from there. I know it probably seems weird. I think a lot of people they go the other way, like they were just born loving comic books, and I I wasn't. And I mean, I think that does definitely play a little bit into. Um, some of my um, what's a good word here my inadequacies in comic book work uh, definitely it was it's not uh, it hasn't been a passion of mine since I was very young but in the 10 years or so that I've been trying my hardest to draw this stuff uh, I've fallen into other things about it that make me love the medium Um, and then you start appreciating things like understanding what Kirby is all about right I only really learned about Kirby uh, frick Six years ago now, maybe we'll say that maybe five. And I took an objective look. I bought the um, Fantastic Four trade paperback. I love the Fantastic Four, by the way. I think uh, I, I wish there was more Fantastic Four, but like you know, cooler. Or people just doing it right. I, I don't know. I, I've tried to pick up Fantastic Four a few times, and it always feels like whoever. And, and this is just me, but it feels like the creative team on it. Just I don't know if they're they're not being allowed to do some really cool things with it or or it's just not fun anymore it's just too serious like I, I have a big thing against like dark comics just to be dark I don't like dark comics just because they're dark I, I, or they're mature or that's the way they should go I actually think that's a uh, a really bad way to look at comics and that's just a personal thing for sure um, and then when they start to do that with the Fantastic Four it kind of breaks in my part in my heart anyway it breaks my heart my, my Fantastic Four comic book heart uh, that's like there was actually really good, and I'm going all over the place here, but there was a Power Ranger uh, video that came out, I think it was like, maybe it was a year ago, maybe even less than that. It was like a mature uh, Power Rangers, uh, where I think Rita was transforming into people or something. People's heads were blowing off, and the Black Ranger was like, it was just we- I didn't like it at all, and I understand it's like a, a different view on it for sure, but it's just not, there's nothing wrong with that. Because people are going to want it, right? But for me, when I look at that stuff, maybe it's just how I remember or like how it was created the first time. That's like it's, it's I don't want to say it's purity, but that's what makes it it. Um, I like to think of my Fantastic Four as just a, the family doing superhero stuff, not the family struggling with like, uh, I guess, real family problems. I like the, the made up family stuff. Um, but on the same note, Ninja Turtles, the original comic book, I read that way after watching the cartoon show. And I was like, oh man, these guys are, <laughs> they're messing some dudes up, you know? And then the cartoon show was out there and totally for kids, right? Totally for kids. You watched the movie and it was like, movie's awesome, but there was some stuff in there, man. Like Shredder being like crushed at the end. Just like, oh my God. But I just love all, turtles too so i get both sides i'm just you know being being stupid here 
Uh, let me just go back up and catch up here so we can keep going. Uh, this stream will most likely be going for more than an hour, I should say, as well. So, I don't know if that's cool or not. Uh, Matador is saying something here that I don't agree with, and I'm kind of getting sad here. Let me just read it. Uh, I'm hoping uh, we get some things here. Uh, Matador, I think my drawing days are over. My back is a wreck from the accident. I That, that actually breaks my heart, man. Um... So what is it about your back that you can't draw? Can you not stand up and draw? Can you, um, is there a way that you can, uh, my buddy Will, you guys know Will Robson, I don't know if he still does this or not, but he has the small Cintiq, I know they're expensive, but just hear me out, um, he has that and he usually, uh, he would lay in his bed with like I guess a pillow behind his back, I don't know how the setup was, but he could lay there and just draw on there. Are you able to do these sort of things? You can't sit or stand, oh man. So if you can't sit or stand, I guess the only thing you could do then is lay down. Is that right? You might be in this situation. Well, you know, obviously you're in a horrible situation, but I, uh, what you're living right now is a, it's something that it's I, I it dread it dreads it, it hurts me to even think about not being able to draw. Um, so my my heart's with you, man. But maybe you can can you lay down at all? Yeah, with a a lay down with a pillow on my side. Do you, do you have like a tablet that you can draw on, like a Cintiq or um, a Surface Pro or a tablet? I know these are all expensive things, and you're in a situation right now where you need to spend, you know, to get recovery and stuff. But maybe it doesn't even have to be digital, man. Just getting back to the old school of paper and stuff. One thing that is, is always on my mind, too, uh, and this isn't to belittle your situation or anything like that. Anything like that at all. Um... The mighty Frank Frazetta. I hope you guys know who he is. If you don't, please go research Frank Frazetta. Um, not even arguable, but he did, f he did not only for fantasy art, but just art in general. And this is my belief. He did for art what Kirby did for comics, but he did for fantasy and illustrative paintings, okay? Um, my facts could be totally wrong on this, but I'm more than sure I ha I'm right on this one. Uh, he suffered a stroke, and lost the ability to the one side of his body to draw and that was his drawing hand he relearned to draw with his other hand but he passed away before whatever but you look at his art and it's still like it's not the level he was at but it's still to the level where it's like we're still like oh my god like and i just always try to remember that so that whenever like because it's real man i've had a few moments where you almost get hit by a car or, or just something you're like whoa i almost like just busted my hand or something right and it's like I start to think on that, and I don't want to get in the negative zone with that, but because of that, it's like the thing that reels me back in or tries to, that, that I'm grateful that I can, that I, like a story that I have heard, is, is that Frank Frazetta, because that guy, to me, is he's a god amongst other artists as well, right? And just knowing that you can pull yourself out with, like, it's as if, like, it was, it's not hard enough to draw, that you get it taken away, and you have to relearn again, uh, it's, you know, that... That takes some serious fortitude. I, I guess, I, basically, I guess what I'm trying to say is, um, I'm not trying to. I'm preaching here. I know for sure. But if you're able to, like, if there's a, re if there's a why to why you're drawing or what is it that you're doing that you want to continue doing, maybe that's if that's strong enough for you to to just you know get back to it. But uh, again, I, I know um, I can't even imagine. Okay, so there's no real, <laughs> real good um, <clears throat> transition from that. Uh, sorry, Justin saying. Sorry, I don't. I, I don't mean to keep uh, jumping around here, guys. I apologize. Uh, Justin, John, do you print on normal printer paper or photo paper? Uh, if I was doing like what I'm saying right here, this would just be the cheapest, most garbage printer paper you can find. Stacks of like 500 for like 500 sheets for like five bucks. Like disgusting. Just it doesn't even. You could do lined paper if that's what you got. That's not the point. If I was doing this for like production stuff, I have Bristol uh, and things things like that. But it, you can always light box stuff. I don't care what anybody says. You can always get your stuff photocopied. You can always print it out on like the cheapest print you can find. The ink. Hey Jessup. The ink is the expensive part for sure. I recommend. I don't think enough people do this, but. Uh, I never even thought of it until I got uh, saw somebody else doing it. But and they're actually cheaper. Is a toner printer, basically it, like uh, what you would do when you photocopy. Not this inkjet or anything that produces color, just black and white. 
the toner lasts forever on those things and even when it starts to dry out if you're doing it for roughs to light box doesn't even matter the second part of it too is what you can do is and this is just have the structure around it as long as you've got sunlight and a window you've got a light box okay uh, so don't sell you guys uh, don't sell yourself short you can always if you if there's a if there's a, a means there's a way and you can definitely try to figure it out you don't have to buy a light box or nothing like that okay all right we need to get moving here on the drawing here uh, you guys are asking so many good questions here um, Uh, Jacob, how you doing, buddy? Uh, hey, John, just came across your YouTube channel or videos recently. You got to say, man, cool stuff, very helpful and inspiring. Thanks, man. Really do appreciate that. So let's continue that on and start doing some more, <laughs> some more drawing. All right, so we've got all our, our roughs here. As you can see, I kind of changed up the composition from what we were doing before. Let's just backtrack here. This is what we started started off with with the rough. Uh, and then uh, just sort of blocking in these guys. Again, I like to use different colors for this. Uh, you don't always have to do this, but I just find it easier so that if these guys are all black, there's a lot of lines that start crossing over each other, and it's easier to, like, move these guys around, right? I can move him around and still see what where he's getting blocked and what he's not blocking, uh, which is great. So we've got that. We've got all that good stuff. So the next, like, I'm, I'm pretty much fine with that composition. I think uh, Gildas would look better even down like that. Um kind of gives like a little bit of a triangular composition uh, I don't know but like having them up here kind of uh, I could go either way to be honest you know what we're gonna just we're gonna go with this one screw it <laughs> we'll see what happens what's the worst that could happen right uh, what's that uh, I found you when I was looking for who you oh okay uh, did you end up buying it and I, I you know the Huey is still a great tablet it's still a great tablet Sweet. Uh, Pillow said he bought the light box. You can try doing traditional animation with it. Oh, you did buy it. Okay. So how's it going for you? Is it, are you still enjoying it? All right. So we're going to have our roughs here. We're going to do another transparency layer. Now this one, um, going to go, uh, I'm still going to use the different colors on this, but I am going to go with sort of like this sort of brush here. I'm going to just make it a little fatter, uh, just so that I can kind of build up some of the detail. And again, you'll see why we're going to do that. Uh, first tablet too, so you don't know what Cintiq is like. It's very good though. Exactly. That okay. I'm I'm very happy and I'm glad for you on that one because that's what I was trying to say. Is I I do feel like there is this uh, stigma out there that um, unless it's Cintiq, don't bother. Uh, I honestly believe that just comes from people that own Cintiqs. If you've never owned one, uh, like things like the Huey on and, and others are more than a sh uh, sure they're they're amazing there's there's n like what you what would actually be wrong you really wouldn't notice unless you had a Cintiq and I don't mean that in a snobby way it's just uh, you you do pay for some extra stuff that's not really evident right off the gate and it's so so small that I think if, if your first experience into this stuff was with one of these other branded tablets uh, you learn to just work within that and you don't even notice that you're and I'm saying losing stuff like losing quality in a very loose way because um, I actually brought my Huey on to work uh, and I use that every day at my day job and I, I can honestly say that since using it every day um, yeah it's gotten much better I've gotten used to the things that it does and it doesn't do um, and, and that's just the way it goes so I'm happy for you bud uh, do, 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 do. Sorry if you guys can hear me drinking. I, I don't like bringing this stuff on here all the time, but I got some cocoa going on. Some cocoa. And yeah, it's the cat's beans, man. I don't know what that means, the cat's beans. What does the cat's beans mean? I don't know. Um, okay, so if there's anybody in here that's uh, one of my patrons on Patreon, hi. <laughs> Thank you for being a patron. Uh, I will be posting, there's the, uh, okay, so those that don't know, I have for my patrons, it's like a free raffle. As long as you're on there, uh, you have a chance to once a month, I do a, a sketch um, on Bristol. Ink, or ink it up, get some grays on there, and uh, randomly pick somebody to uh, mail it out for free to. So that I'm hoping to get done um, tomorrow. 
and then I'll announce the winner tomorrow as well. Uh, so if you're interested as well, um, you can head over now. It's every it's done for the month previous. So at the end of this month, if you're a patron, next month's uh, raffle you can be uh, in if you're interested. <laughs> no, not that Coco. Oh, you're talking. <laughs> I think I was talking about the other Coco. What's her name? Ah, uh, it doesn't even matter. Okay, so. <laughs> hey, how's it going? All right, so let's get Jessup's head in here, all massive, massif. Uh, we're going to go with new window. I always forget to do this with you guys. So we're going to put this on the side, and I'm just going to zoom out just a little bit, just so you guys can kind of see it. I know it's not a big deal, because we're pretty much zoomed in, but... Uh, I like to have that on my second monitor anyway. So we're gonna have Jessup's hands here. This hand should probably be doing similar action as the, the other fist. Right. And you can see I'm still trying to be pretty loose. Uh, I will actually throw something in here. Uh, a perspective grid once we get into do the tight lines and hopefully you guys can see why now the one thing I don't like about like this sort of pose is like he's supposed to have like he's massive upper body right like ridiculously so we're gonna give him little nub legs here because we're not gonna see them we're gonna cut them off uh, but I'm, I know I'm gonna run out of room but I just wanna see if we can just just a little more Little more. You can see I, I screwed up right here because the angle is we're supposed to be looking up. Like that. Stash. I screwed it up. Actually, I think we can go just there. We go. to do this right. So this is where his chin is. Never see his mouth. His mustache go here. Get his nose coming up like that. He's got to look happy. He's a happy guy. And here we get the big old fat neck muscles. Ooh. All right, so we got that action going. Um, Justin's asking, hey, Jonathan, I'm thinking about building myself a website for my work. Would you recommend doing that? 100%. Uh, and in saying that, I need to do that too. Mine is horribly out of date. Uh, I need to get something. Oh, okay, so I guess uh, some, some, quite, or some things I can make or ask you to do to make your life easier. Make it incredibly easy for you to update. Try not to get too fancy with it. Um, most of the time... All you really need is some place to have a portfolio and like a blog. It doesn't even have to be a blog. It can be a um, a link to like wherever you post like a lot of things. So Twitter, you can get like a feed like that that goes right into your site. Just something that so when people go to your site, they can see that you're you're not just working, but you're you're drawing. You're you're always drawing, right? Like that's the idea. If you can get like strangers to come to your site, uh, that might eventually give you work or something right or just fans you know as a fan i like to go to sites too just like you do think about what it is that you like to do or what you like to do when you go to people's websites and i know a lot of people actually don't go to websites anymore like an artist website unless you're really like a big fan and they have something there for you to check a store or a web comic or, or something like what is the new thing you're working on that sort of stuff right that's all huge that's all important 
So if you have all those things, I would recommend doing that. If you aren't doing any of that, if you're just trying to, you want a place that you can uh, link people to check out your artwork, I think uh, Tumblr is a great site. A lot of people use that. Um, I would recommend buying something like JustIncrediblemiller.com or JustIncredible, something simple, .com, and that .com can forward, which means whenever somebody types that, it'll go to a website, and you can have that go to like your Tumblr site and things like that. You don't necessarily have to have a whole functioning website. Um, uh, it just it just depends. I, I know what I tried to do with the current version. Like if you guys go to mine, if you're interested at all, I haven't had a chance to update it, but like one of the big things that I wanted to have there was okay, so here's my YouTube stuff, but you can go there so that you can check out like okay, does he have a video on perspective on blah blah blah? You can go there and just, there's like a perspective section, click that and 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 you'd be good to go, right? Like that was the intent of that, um, but it took. It's not a lot of time, but it took enough time for me to go, I don't really want, or I don't, it's not that I don't have the time to do it, it's just I'd rather not be doing that, I'd rather be drawing, you know, and that's where, uh, for me anyway, it started following, falling through, uh, because of, it. you'd be surprised, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming, I can't be alone in this, I'm assuming you guys go through it too, some of you guys are better than us, and you don't go through this, but if something takes longer than like five minutes to do, uh, I really don't want to do it. Right, like if a perfect example is if I take a picture of something, uh, I have a, an app called Every Post, I think it is, and you can look it up to like pretty much all your social media stuff. So when I make a post, I can just click it through that, and it'll post everything. Now we don't have to take the five minutes to go through and post on all these sites, right? Like it just becomes monotonous. To go, Ugh. It, th I know it's really lazy, it's re <laughs> really lazy, but anyway. Uh, what's up, perfect? I finally caught up with all of my streams. I watched from July on. Oh damn. Well, I hope <laughs> hope you enjoyed them. I hope they weren't too gross. Sometimes I wish I was a little bit of a fly on a wall, just the that vicariousness, right? Like, oh, what do they think? How's it going? Listen to this guy rambling and never drawing. <laughs> All right, uh, I'm off screen right now. I'm just getting uh, something here. You, guys, I'll show you guys too. So, uh, once I can get it here. Uh, I'm just trying to get a picture of, there it is, so I'll bring it on screen so we can see it. Uh, so that, uh, this is the pinup that we've done forever, but what it is, is it's also got its costume, which is reference. Uh, I w you would think I would know it off by heart by now, but I do not. I did, it is a little bit of a different design than what I had before, when uh, the first couple passes we did with Jessup. Um, so it is a little different now, and I'm still getting, it, it's not a very intricate costume at all, but there's little things in there that I want to make sure I'm getting uh, to build into the muscle memory, as well as you don't want to start forgetting little elements of your costume, and the characters just start, looks like they're bouncing around, like they have no final design, anything like that, right? Okay, so, he's got some gloves. So right now I'm drawing in red, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> um, and this is just to separate the parts here of the character. I like to do this. I know some people don't. Um, I did just talk about doing this to separate characters, which I recommend doing. Um, but I also recommend it in separating costume. Now, it's great for roughs because, as you can see, I can quickly see what design is here, right? It's not like I'm... If you guys work with pencil, and I know, I know we've all worked in pencil, but... I always found that sometimes I would, once I would start get, like when I'd get my kneadable eraser out and it's time to start doing some tight pencils, well, what would happen is because I had to erase a little bit, all of a sudden, costume elements, like I couldn't tell where they were anymore. They're just getting lost, right? And not to go master race digital art here, but because of that, because of digital, right? Like, I'm able to just do this. It, it's such a subtle thing, and I, I really don't think a lot of people struggle with this. I think I'm just special in the head. And, like, I, I need this extra step, and I don't even really know if I do. I, it feels like I do. Um, but anyway, so Jay here, and then, uh, of course, wouldn't be Jessup unless he's got his Pokeballs ready to go. And what else did I give him here? So what do we got here? Coming down, and it goes like that. Cool. And that's pretty much it. Like I said, it's not a very complicated costume at all. 
but uh, it's important that we don't forget these pieces. So what I'll also do here is I'm going to group these guys into a new folder. This one, I'm going to minimize it and call this one Jessup or J-Pop, whatever you want. And I'm going to lower the opacity down on that mofo. That way we can make, guess what, another folder. And we'll call this one Gildas. A layer. And we're going to do the exact same thing we just did with uh, the other guy. You can see how busy this is starting. <laughs> Actually, I think why this is happening. Here, let's just turn that off. There we go. What I did is I just turned the um, the sketch layer off that we initially started with for Jessup because we've already built on that. We don't need another one. So um, let's get his hand in here. It's actually pretty important. Because this is what's going to. Well, it's not what sells this character, but that hand is huge. Holy hell. But. This is where we get the whip. And, uh, it was. I can't wait to get back into this comic too. It's gonna be. It's gonna be awesome. Uh, I was really excited to draw. Like I was. I had all these sketches for Gildas here, like how he would use his whip and stuff. And I like the idea of him like using it, sort of like. <laughs> I don't want to say like how like, like how you use a gun. You point it at someone, you shoot, right? But then you get gangsters, whatever. They'll turn it side. Gangsters, God. Anyway, you'll turn it sideways. And it just. It looks. It's got style to it for some reason. Um, if you look at like there's some Star Wars stuff with people with lightsabers, <laughs> and all of a sudden they um, they use it backwards, uh, totally ineffective, but it has style to it, right? So, no pillow, go, don't worry about that. Plug away, everybody. If you got stuff, share it. Everybody's looking for new stuff. But anyway, so he would have his like the whip kind of going like that sort of thing here. Uh, let's see what we can get. Yes, the arm. We got Gildas looking over. Look at the badass. <laughs> so stupid. All right, then here he's got the big nose. Massive chin, the massive chin. Got some eye action here. I'm not going too detailed with this, right? Because we're going to do all that in the tight lines. Try not to waste time. So he's got his hair. Bring it here, and he's got like the. Again, more style hair. Got an Adam's apple in that action. Alright, so let's sort of see if we can start to piece together. And what I'm trying to do is always look over here at Jessup. Because he's, they've all got to be in the same perspective here. We can't have people that are, like, in different perspectives. It just looks really effed up, right? And I know we're going to have Jessup in front of him, so I don't need to draw all of his body. But uh, we're going to just draw, hopefully, enough. They're about the same height. So, And like I said earlier, they are pretty much the same bodies. Moses, you won't even see, but we can always change it if we feel like things are getting too too crazy here. All right, All right so we'll have that uh, just to make it clear. Let's turn Jessup's folder off, and we're going to make a brand new layer on top of this, and we're going to do Gildas's costume here in white, or sorry, in red and white. Alright, so he's got his bandana, which I kind of already put in there. And he's got the little scar across his cheek. And the design we're going to go with this one here is going to be like this simple one. I never really landed on a final design with this guy. But we can get a really cool cape kind of fluffing up this way. Got the 
old school bracers. Square nipples because that's how you know you're a hero. I think we had this was square in here. Something like that. So I know he doesn't look too fancy here. Uh, let's turn off his. So we can kind of see. This way we can kind of see what's going on, right? Bring Jessup back in the mix here so we can kind of see, right? So what's really cool again is just being able to move this stuff around. Like maybe I want to bring him over just a little bit so we can give Gilda some more breathing room. I'm not sure, to be honest. Uh,. We don't want to keep making them all bigger. Uh, maybe we can bring Gildas down a little bit. Like that, perhaps. <laughs> Joseph King. <laughs> I like that. I even like the way you spelt it, too. It even makes it seem more fantasy, right? It's cool. No, it's, yeah, it's Jessup. That, that's probably me and my mush mouth talking. You can't hear what I'm saying. J-E-S-O-P. And I believe I even spelled Jessup wrong. I believe it's J-E-S-S-O-P. I didn't even know that was a real name. Uh, my good friend John Lees, uh, writer of The Standard, and then Emily was gone. Uh, he said, "I you might want to spell check that. I'm pretty sure it's J-E-S-S-O-P. Uh, <laughs> but I, I thought, I was like, I was already there. I like the one S. So I believe it's the way you pronounce it is Jessop or the S would almost be silent, like J. It's with one S is Jess, Jessop, I believe it is, and with two S is Jessup. It's really stupid. It doesn't matter. So who would kick whose ass? Who would win, Jessup or would Gildas? Well, that's actually kind of fun. Let's talk about that while we're drawing Momo. <laughs> so the characters, the way they work, Jessup is a big teddy bear. So I get that demographic covered. <laughs> uh, no, Jessup's, uh, he, think of Captain America mixed with, uh, who do we mix him with? He's very honor, pride, justice, and all that stuff, but he's uh, got the heart of, I'm trying to think of somebody that's just, like, a, like your sweet old grandpa, we'll say, right? That sort of stuff. Like very, like, he doesn't like to fight. Even though everything I draw him in is action, okay? Uh, his Pokeballs that he has there. I'm going to talk about a lot of all this stuff when we start doing the... Um... <clears throat> Sorry. Where my hair black? That's what we want. Uh, but once we start doing the mini-comics, you guys can obviously read story and stuff. But uh, his costume is part of his uh, the weapons like the pokeballs it's all an organic suit that reconstructs itself over time and what that allows his pokeballs to do is and I keep calling them that because it's really what they what they are that's where I'm trying to influence them from um, but what they do is it's sort of like Batman's utility belt usually he's got a solution if he can think of it in there kind of like Green Lantern too I guess um, and he just throws it and something pops out that'll that'll help the team in some way right um, so, even though uh, he doesn't like to fight, uh, obviously I like drawing big muscle guys in action scenes. Sounds really, like, erotic, and it, I really <laughs> I really don't mean it to be. It's just, uh, you know, like, ever since I was a kid, I saw this image of the Hulk just, like, raging out and just, like, flipping cars, like, flipping skyscrapers and stuff, like, just out of, like, insane stuff, and it's just, that's really cool to me, really cool. Um, anyway... So he can do all that stuff, um, and I kind of, I'm still mixing around, and I like him being a, uh, a grappler, too. Um, big fan of Zangief from Street Fighter. He's like my favorite character in there. So he's an amalgamation of a bunch of characters like that. Uh, so, and, and what he does is he always tries to find the best in people, trying to, a, a good solution out of it. It's not just rush in there, beat the shit out of the bad guy. He'd rather tell the bad guy what you're doing is wrong and here's why. Well, he's getting punched in the face sort of thing, okay? Now, yes, exactly. Pokeballs for plot convenience. It's literally the, um, oh, what is it called? Oh, what is, oh, damn it, what is that called? It is the, 
I'm trying to remember there's a video game with the name. What are you guys are probably going to type it before I can think of it? The Deus Ex Machina? Machina? Is that how you say it? It's pretty much okay. So God gives you something that gets you out of a situation. X Mach. There you go. Okay. There you go. <laughs> so you guys, are, you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. Let me just put my reference here because I'm kind of blanking on where we ended up with Momo. Anyway, so that's all that's going on there. Uh, um, Gildas, on the other hand, he's a younger guy, and he's he's the total opposite. He's very impulsive. He's Wolverine. He's very go, 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 very aggressive, very um, – he believes he should be the guy, right? So very prideful. So it would actually be a pretty good fight. I think it would be pretty fun. It would be pretty cool. Two polar opposites. I think that would be very um, into it. Um, Gildas is actually, he's not very mobile. He's very uh, solid. His whip does a lot of the work for him. Uh, he's a, a master in the whip foo, whatever you want to call that. And uh, he's also got an ability that uh, his clan or his guild of people that are demon slayers, they go around, they can actually take the soul or the dark energy from a, a, a slayed minion and consume it and it's more of the plot stuff again I know you guys never got around to this because I never showed you but uh, it, it's a, a back and forth of being able to control and keep those demonic forces in and not let them control you but the, the better thing is for you to consume those so that they don't continue being evil on like innocent right so think of a paladin it destroys a skeleton, takes that dark energy from the skeleton, and has that continual battle inside him. And the higher rank that these people go, these demon hunters go, uh, they can just control massive amounts of these forces, right? So, of course, you know, some of them get corrupted, and they become dark paladins and that sort of thing. So that's sort of like the, the, the tug and pull in Castle Dracula that was going to be there. And obviously Dracula played a, a cool part in that, too. Then there's Momo, and she's more of, again, more of the Wolverine kind of character, like, let's go. Uh, but she's more uh, magic and ranged and stuff like that. So uh, Jessup's also got a shield. You know, his suit's got a protective shield on there. So I like Jessup myself. I'm with you guys. I like that kind of character. I think they're a little bit more honorable. I want to see that guy win, you know, that sort of thing. My heart is with that character. Uh, Gildas is more like, you know, he got shit on. He deserves to win because he's revenge. And it's, it's, and it's, he's right in trying to get that revenge, that sort of version. Uh, okay, so let's keep drawing here. Uh, where are we going here? Okay, let's go to Jess King. Gotta find some little Momo here. And some people, uh, I, I guess we'll share this too. So why is she called Momo? I know it's such a stupid name. <laughs> Uh, where do we go with inks? I don't even know what we ended up with her. You know what? Let's go to a pinup. So how it went is um, Jessup King was a character I came up with. Uh, I have a cat. Her name is Zelda, for the obvious reasons. And uh, so later on, um, I was just like, you know what? I think I need to get a second cat because Zelda, I, she's not getting the attention. I think there's a second cat here. They're not outdoor cats. So that she gets somebody to play with and stuff, right? And, and they're actually like, they're so cute together, guys. They're giving each other kisses, they're chasing each other. Awesome stuff. <laughs> Could be the opposite where they hate each other, but it works out. So when I got Jessup as a kitten, uh, he had the mustache, obviously. So I named him Jessup. Anyway, so when I went to make the story, I didn't know the name of the second character. I couldn't call the second character Zelda because that's so everybody knows what that is that it's it's ridiculous, right? And one of the nicknames I have for her is Momo. I think a lot of people call their cats Momos. I call them Momo and Jojo. That's their little like short form name. So that's why this character is Momo. And originally this character was also male, but uh, a little nod to my cats. That's why they're there. I'm sorry this is taking so long, you guys. I'm looking for. Um, it's like an old image that I did. Actually, you know what? Let me hop on Facebook real quick. Don't mean to take too much of you guys' time here. And I know we are in the hour already. Uh, we're probably going to go for, I know I said two hours, probably about another half hour or something. I, I want to make at least a serious dent in this here. Um, and, oh, that didn't work. Um, so I just want to say, if there's anybody in here that's new to this channel, or new to me and stuff, well, thanks for coming in. Uh, this show is every Wednesday from 8 to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, so look at the clock right now, subtract an hour, that's when it starts. And um, trying to get back into the swing of things, of getting more streams for you as well. And if you want, you guys can head on over to YouTube and type Scribbles with Jonathan. That's, uh, I guess, the, the main show where most people know me uh, from over there, too. Okay, so, Facebook, come on, let's go. 
And again, I don't know exactly the design just for this character yet, and I hate having to do design work on a, something that's a final cover, you know? Uh, we did do some work together uh, where she had like a big um, witch's hat to add a little bit more fantasy to the book. But what I ended up reeling back on is it's it's too far to the point where I... Like, I'm not going to enjoy trying that all the time. And as simple as a design as she is, and it, it's a very simple design. Really what I'm looking for is how I drew the eyes. Um, but that simple design is easy to draw, replicate, animate. Um, and it's not something that I would dread or not look forward to doing. Um, which is which is actually a big thing. If you're going to do, especially a webcomic, but if you're going to do a comic in general and you've got creative control over the design of the characters, I would highly recommend, highly recommend, picking characters that uh, have a look to them that you don't mind drawing over and over and over again. A lot of people hate drawing Iron Man for that exact reason. And you might notice that more designs Iron Man goes through, he gets more slick, more slick, and more slick. And I have to imagine that's because people don't like drawing him all the time. have to imagine it. Alright, we're almost getting there. I know how far, how many years back we did this. <laughs> oh, come on. This is ridiculous. Sorry about this, you guys. It's, it's, it's like it's not even that big of a thing. Oh, my God. Boring, boring. <laughs> oh my god. I promise it's soon. I've been uh, debating too just making her eyes just black circles <laughs> and then the other one we did before was a little bit more animated right like they were like big big eyes with like little flecks in them for light and stuff and I uh, you know they're cute but um they're not that fun to draw over and over again this can't be real life. <laughs> this can't be real life. Oh, man. Jeez. All right, so while I'm looking, what I'm going to put on the screen here is a picture of Jessup as a baby. There you go. This is my, my baby Jessup. Uh, he used to just like hanging out in uh, clothes taken out of the dryer and put into the hamper. <laughs> and he'd put his little, uh, I always called it a spaceship, so I would like pick it up and like walk it around the house. You seem to like it. <laughs> All right. Mother of God. Holy half, we found it. Okay, and that's a, <laughs> Jesus. It's literally what I thought they would look like. Okay, so this is it. This is all I was looking for. It's nothing special. That's what, right there, this look right here. That's all it was, this one here. This also was colored, uh, oh man, how many years ago? 2013. Uh, by my, she's not a good friend, but she's a friend. And I don't say good friend because she's like a scumbag or something, because she's not. I just don't know her, like, in real life, in the reels life. I've met her a couple times. Anyway, Heather Breckel. She colors the, uh, I believe she still colors the Ninja Turtle Adventures. Uh, check out her work, guys. It's actually really good. Um, and her, I don't know how much her page rates have gone up or anything, uh, but she does really good work. Um, so if you guys are looking for a colorist, check out Heather Breckel. Okay? Check out her stuff there. Um, okay, sorry, let me just go back. Uh... <laughs> Jessup looks nothing like your cat. He is way more muscular. <laughs> Uh, that's too funny. Okay. So now that I have the most simplest face in the world. Uh, 
it's a Ninja Turtle head. Simplest eyes ever. But it's got to be female, right? So what do females have, guys, that guys don't have? Eyelashes. <laughs> Thick mascara-laden eyelashes. Gotta have them. Oh, this is black. We'll put some shines in there somewhere. Kind of got a derpy face going on right there. So let's see if we can. Yep, still derp. Let's see if we can fix this here. Just want you smiling. This is great because I know <laughs> I definitely don't going to have angles like this, um, which is very good to know that I need to do some character studies to figure out what is that angle that needs to work. Uh, one thing that we did design that I really liked was sort of like this gapped tooth I thought it made her look a little like a little not cute you know like there's a little there's some youth there and it's not all just you know weird squid thing and I don't know if we're gonna keep these little like dots over here and we're gonna put the crown although she's see the crown it'd be a prince and a king um, she's not a queen, she's a princess, so it's a tiara. A tiara. I don't know what that's going to look like yet. We're going to have to do some research on Google when we get to doing the line art for that. So we'll just put something there. Uh, I don't really like it over there, but that's fine. And then she's got tentacle action. And I'm actually going to save the tentacles for wherever because uh, you guys have seen how I like to do that with just the one brush and then just shrink it there. But it's good to know where... Our placements are going to be. Okay, so we got Momo done, Jessup, and Momo is obviously very easy. Turn off all our reference. So let's just take one last look at the cover here because this is actually going to... Are we good with this? Are we going to go any further with this? You know, is there any, This is the moment right now where I don't want to say you make final changes because you never need to make final changes when you're doing digital, uh, but... I find it's very good to just look at something like this and go, is this good enough to where less work needs to be done later on? Because what you want to be doing is taking away work that you're going to do later. Now, the be always do the heaviest legwork in the beginning of your, of your process. Uh, that way later on, all you ever need to worry about is just making it look good with detail. And I know that's another beast of tackle, but... In the beginning here, if you can figure out all your anatomy problems, like your main anatomy problems and your composition and stuff like that, definitely do that now because it's just scribbles. Nothing here is is going on that's that's nuts or anything like that, right? Uh, what's that? It would be cool to have a homie that can turn your character into 3D five point. Man, that would be real slick. That would be real slick. Momo's dangly, but oh, the little, yeah, I don't even know what we're gonna have for that character yet. <laughs> So I'm just going to keep it as is for now. All right, so all that jibber-jabber is to say I think we're good with this here. I, I, you know, there's not much. Once I get in there with the text and stuff, I will be able to move some things around. Uh, what I am going to do is when we get to inking Jessup, or sorry, Gildas and Momo, I'm going to actually bring them in a little bit. That way I can draw a little bit outside of their arm. So if I need to, once we get down to the final inks, once... Basically, once we get to the line art stage, that's the final version-ish of what we're going to do. Um, and then the inks are going to go past that. Um, so, hopefully you'll, we'll see what we're doing there. So, I guess we'll start with... Let's turn all this down. We're going to make a new layer here. We're going to call this one Lines. And we'll save it up. Uh, so I don't know if I want to do Jessup first. Maybe we'll do Gildas first, just because I wanted to sh oh, so you guys can see what I was talking about with that. All right, so the roughs, I'm actually going to turn the layer down quite a bit. Lines are going to make a new folder inside there. And we're going to do the exact same thing. This one we're going to call Gildas. And we can keep all the characters on their own, okay? So we're going to grab our dead line. I just got to zoom in here, because these characters are a little bit bigger. I think these lines might be a little small. Like that should print out well on 11 by 17. But since I know this is going even smaller because it's going to get condensed, let's see what the 600 DPI looks like. Yeah, 
Yeah, that might be a little better. Okay, so what I was saying is this. Okay, so we're going to have that. I'm going to take the whole roughs file. <sighs> Sorry, that's a lie. Gildas here, and we're going to move him slightly over this way. That way, I'm going to draw the rest of this much in there. That way, I do have some wiggle room when it comes into uh, when it comes to drawing this character here. Okay. <laughs> oh, now I'm kind of hesitant here. Give me a second here, because I'm just struggling with the brush size here. Let's see what we had in our. <laughs> Um, I think we can make it work. Right, Jojo? I think we can make it work, big boy. Alright, so let's start with the face here. So this stage, I don't want to say we're going slop fest, <laughs> but uh, definitely don't need to be as precious as I think a lot of people think they should be in this stage. Have some faith in your inking abilities. That uh, Remember, when we ink, especially with digital, we've also got the ability to ink in white. And that's huge because that lets us go in here and fix our mistakes, add things, um, and all that sort of thing. So you don't got to get caught up and, oh, like this line isn't perfect and all that. Like, screw that. Get that out of your head. You can always fix it. What we're Again, what we're always looking for is can I build on this, right? Like, look at this. What is the hell is going on right there? Look at all that line action that's going in there. Gross, right? That's fine. We can worry about it when we're inking. It doesn't even matter because we can. If if it maybe it does look good in the grand scheme of things. At the end, uh, probably not. But if it doesn't, it's no sweat. We can go ahead and ink over it in white. It's not a big deal. I'm just gonna lower this a little bit more because I can still see these guys pretty pretty rough. Uh, yeah, sorry, so this this is for a, um, a cover for a convention sketchbook that I'd like to have yearly. This one is coming out this weekend for Sunday, um, and then after the show I'll have some online uh, for those of you that are interested in picking up most likely a digital copy or if you're interested in artist edition, whatever the hell, that kind of stuff. New layer here. I'm going to hold our shift key down. So happy they added this in Manga Studio 5, like in the fifth or in the uh, Manga Studio 4. God, they didn't have just that. And that was one of the things that made me just go, you know what? I'm sticking with Photoshop because of just what you saw there. Like the line isn't perfect, I know, but it is. Just being able to be able to do just that, huge. Absolutely huge. And for those of you that don't really do what I just did there, I recommend checking that out too, because I think that'll save you a lot of stress and time. It doesn't have to be perfect straight lines, never does, but... It does help you get some things down. Uh, so you don't always have to have like straight line, or not straight line, sorry, you don't always have to break out certain tools or you feel like, man, I got to keep redrawing this curve or this line, like, it's it's nonsense, uh, unless you're going for total perfection with your artwork, um, you don't have to worry about it. Oops. And we just go 
previous layer, just erase what we're drawing over. All right, we're gonna do this too, cause I don't. Eh, what the hell? We'll try it. So they're not totally circles. They're sort of like. I don't know what the hell they are. All right, so we got our line there, but we can just play our action. Turn into some, some line art. Cool. Keep going. So this line's actually pissing me off. I don't like. I actually don't like a lot of this here. What am I doing here? Oh, I'm going. <laughs> it's like a race fest. The reason why I'm erasing this because I, I didn't like it is because he's got he's supposed to have this huge chin, and his chin wasn't wasn't huge enough. <laughs> That's much better. Much better. Uh, Jacob, what's that? I just, uh, something, I just Manga Studio 5, and I'm trying to force myself to finish a picture with only my Hue Yon and no Photoshop. It's frustrating. I, I am with you. I, I will say yes, the more, I, I suppose, okay, as a person, that I use Photoshop every single day. Monday to Friday, anyway, for sure. <laughs> uh, at my, uh, at my day job. And there's things in there that uh, I'm just used to doing, right? I don't know what it is in your workflow that you're doing that you can't seem to do in Manga Studio. And am I saying it wrong? I've had people comment on it. Is it Manga Studio? I say Manga because I always thought that's how you're supposed to say it. I'm sure it doesn't really matter. but Man, drawing this guy again. Oh, so good. So you got these big old Final Fantasy stuff. Manga. Manga. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, Justin, how is your Cintiq going too? M manja? Manja? There we go. <laughs> Alright, so it sounds like there's a bunch of ways to say it. <laughs> Wacom, Wacom, yeah, there's so many ways of saying that, too. Uh, Jacob's saying, I'm, it's not that I don't like Manga Studio, I just don't know where all the buttons and stuff are yet. Okay, I got you there. One, Okay, I'm just going to give you a pro tip right now. I hate saying pro tips because that makes it sound like I'm... Anyway, do the, this is one thing I will tell you, brother, right now. I pretty much know in and out Photoshop. There's some things, like, I know I do certain things that... Uh, uh, like our workarounds, there's easier ways to get to it. I think that's in, in, in software in general. I think everybody has their way of finding things and getting things done. Um, but then they also have like things that take longer to do the same effect, but that's just the way you learn it or whatever, right? One thing that Manga Studio f does that is absolutely wonderful once you start getting into doing what it should be for, which is just illustration, it gets out of your way, a lot of it gets out of the way, even though there's a lot of like wackiness going on with all this stuff here, okay, it's just this right here, well it's two, <laughs> okay, so if you're coming from Photoshop, I'm assuming, and you might not, some of you guys don't do it too, but I have actions, right, that play, so when you guys saw me do, here, I'll do one right now, just a quick example, so I press F6, let's say I wanted to draw even more strands of hair, one way you can do it, I grab the marquee tool, you can draw it with a pen, right? What you're doing is you're just drawing in black, I'm holding shift down. Yeah, that's fun. Cool. You're making silhouetted shapes. Yeah, awesome, right? All this stuff. I have an action that I just press, and what it does is select all that stuff, decrease it, and fill it with white. So I just press a button, boom, done, right? And what that just did is, obviously, we all know how much time that just saved, right? Then you go over top of it with an appropriate brush, this one's too thick, but then you just start going, yeah, look at all these cool lines, right, yeah, awesome, now you're making some sweet hair, for doing, it's just, it's faster to do that, right, in Photoshop, actions make more sense, because that's where I, I, I found out about them, but in Manga Studio, what was pissing me off, is I could still make them, but I'd always have to press play, I, like, I didn't know how to, there's no hotkeys up there, 
Now, I know a lot of you guys probably already know this, but some of you don't, and I really do wish you guys spend the time to customize your UI, make Manga Studio work for what you would like it to do, okay? So there's two things. The first one I'm going to show you, obviously, is a shortcut settings, and this is actually really slick. Right in the settings area, you click there, it actually has it right here. It's called Auto, Ac Auto Actions, and, and it's not called um, Actions like it is in Manga Studio, or sorry, in Photoshop. Just called auto actions amongst it. You click that, boom, you got your default ones, you got mine here, and then you can just make them. The shortcuts there, awesome, saves, okay? That's one thing I, I, I don't think enough people do. Uh, I've also done, th I've tried to make it as much Photoshop as possible. I have, I can press X, and like in Photoshop, X switches between these two colors. I just press that, it goes back and forth. That, from somebody that's coming from Photoshop, if I can make this like that, I think it, it just makes the transition easier. I have that there. Um, the very last thing I'll show you guys real quick is if you go down to Command Bar Settings, this is actually one of the, the coolest and slickest things in Manga Studio, if you ask me. You can find all sorts of ability or abilities, but like little things you can click on and stuff and move them up here into this bar, right? So I have things like rotate, undo, flip, flip horizontal, uh, resize the image, so my view, so I can see the whole thing right away. Um, and then this one right here I'll show you, right? So like we're zoomed in. Maybe I, I need to come out real quick. Bang. Just press a button. Oh, cool. I can see what's going on there, right? We can zoom right back in. You know, scroll in over here, whatever you want to do. You got all that action. Uh, rotating it, you know, that's cool. This button right here that I have here, it just resets it. Click that horizontal. I don't have to do anything like that. That's the sort of stuff that um, I think, I, 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 I don't believe enough people use in, in Manga Studio, and it, it saves you so much time. It just makes it so much easier. You know what I'm saying? Like, just being able to have this stuff there and adding what you want. You could do whatever you want up here. I've had stuff up here that was like, here, just real quick, just to go through you guys. File, command bar settings, like, look. So, story, if you want to go back pages, if you work in comic pages. Um, fills, advanced fills, filter effects in there, view. That's where I think a lot of the power comes in, if you wanted to flip and rotate and all that stuff. Selections, like things that you might not ever really use um, that you can have right up there, and I think that's very powerful. And yeah, like Justin saying there too, I've seen people uh, use Manga Studio that don't even use a keyboard because you can actually add to the UI. Whereas I think in Photoshop, you can. Um, you can definitely add windows and stuff like that, but I, I find it is a little bit different. That's all. So, it does have, and the brushes too. Uh, Photoshop has so many awesome brushes, and people make so many brushes that it's so easy to have those effects. And I, that's not there yet with Manga Studio. It'll take time, but you can import brushes and stuff like that. Um, but anyway, I'm not trying to sell you on this. I just feel your pain, and anybody comes from Photoshop where it might feel like it's it's not, there's something wrong, or there's something like, you feel like there's stuff missing. Um, that sort of stuff. Pro tip, you're <laughs> yes, and uh, Doug Hills, if you check out his web, or even on YouTube, you guys got tons and tons of man great Manga Studio 5 content. So let's keep going. Still got the same stuff in here. And you can see like how like how dirty that hand is there. Like, it's not even But you guys just have to you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna record this whole process uh after our stream tonight. Um like I said, I have to have this finished by the week or five even by like tomorrow at the latest so that I can in case I can't get this stuff printed. Um so expect to get a video up pretty soon whenever you're watching this of the process of this. It'll be sped up as well. I know a lot of people <laughs> like where the hell are all your, your your videos like your sped up ones? Everything's all the stream stuff. Sorry about that. I'm just doing what I can do. But uh, yeah, we'll get it up there because I, I know people are going to get a kick out of it. And um, it's interesting to see this sort of stuff here. So check this out. This is really cool stuff. I love, this is one of the cool things, one of the cool things about doing um, this workflow. And again, this is the Freddy method that I'm drawing in that I like to call it. Go get, go buy DC Comics Guide to Digitally Drawing Comics. Talk all about this stuff. You can check out Freddy's videos. Great guy. So I'm going to draw like, I, I guess that's an arm, right? Like, whatever. It's 
you guys would believe it's an arm, right? So we're going to make a new layer. I'm going to grab my lasso tool again. I just like doing this with the lasso tool myself. And I'm just going to start constructing the straps. That would be here. I'm going to fill that in. And we're going to run our action. Bang, cool. We got some line art. Make another layer on top of it. And we're going to make some belt buckles. What's really cool about this too is you can get kind of creative. You know, you can really start to figure out like, oh, okay, maybe I want something over here or not, right? So I'm just going to make a selection here to cut that out. Actually, a buckle wouldn't go that way. I got it the wrong way. Buckle will go this way. Okay, and then we're going to run that again. Bang, cool. Now, I really enjoy this stuff here, right? So let's say we want like some funky... I don't know, I'm going to grab my, my inky brush. I'm going to make it a little bit fatter because you want a little bit fatter of a brush because it's going to delete the inside of it, right? But I like having like the idea of like a pattern on here too. I'm not sure what would look good for this guy. I know I would like to mirror um, what's going on with his sort of like those horn rivets on his headband so I'm gonna put them there too and then right here I did this actually with like the Legend of Zelda commission that I did uh, Link has like a lot of these really intricate patterns in here um, maybe I'll just like swipe that for now nobody's really gonna notice it and kinda come in here like this and you can kinda come in I'm just trying to do patterns here that doesn't really look good put one here maybe this one can come up it looks like dwarven runes a little bit. All right, whatever. We're gonna run that pattern again, and as you can see, like, yeah, okay, it doesn't look that hot, <laughs> right? Like, that doesn't look like that looks pretty friggin' gross if we flip it, right? But I just want to show you guys. I'm gonna wrap up the video here too, but I just want to show you this. So let's assume this is done, okay? This is the line art John gets, and it's time to ink. So I'm gonna make a new layer, and with their our brush, right? Like, so all I need to do is draw in black or white. That's it. That's as complicated as this goes. And you can clean up so much work, right? So we'll just do like a generic uh, light source like it's come from the top, right? So I'm just going to sort of pet these lines in. But you can see like all under here, right? And you can tell when I start inking, I'm cleaning up these lines as well, right? Like these lines are starting to get a little bit more things going on. Now look in here, like this is all a mess. So I'm just going to draw in white, right? And clean that stuff up. I'm trying to go pretty quick here with you guys. But you can always clean it up or, or even do this, right? Like beat it up a little bit, you know, and just kind of come in here and just add some more detail work like that. And you, right away, once you start getting into the inking, and you have to be, <laughs> have some discipline and try not to go right into the inking with this stuff, but um, just jumping into the inks and stuff like that, right away, a lot of, I think, what people get deterred about when they work with like just microns or something like that's pretty much what this uh, methods doing but when you work like this it's kind of like ugh, it's but there's not that punch that that heavy line art and stuff right and i'm with you it doesn't until you start inking and and what it does is like this method lets you ink any way you want maybe you want to do heavy rendering maybe you just want to do very little rendering just line weights so that your colors can do all the work right like maybe we're going to put some rendering in here let's put some fancy rendering Ooh. up a little bit seen some action it's punched a few ghouls in the face you know and we want to go like yeah let's get this like pleather all mangled up yeah right so we zoom out and like it's hard to tell that this was drawn in a certain way I suppose I don't, I don't want to make it sound like ooh this is all magic and stuff but it's just it, it fixes a lot of what I think a lot of people are, are, are get butt hurt about when they when people are like I suggest drawing this in this method or whatever right like even his face I can start to like really come in here and just go like alright well some of these lines are getting too thick just draw in white man just knock that stuff out don't worry about it Right, we can still do our rendering. We can still, if anything, there's one thing Freddie said uh, in his book that I, I 
I believe 100%, which is, at least he finds it to be like this. If you can, what he notices is when he works like this, is that it keeps his work honest. Meaning that it's hard to cheat just a deadline, right? Like I could go in here and uh, when I used to render heavily all the time, I would cheat my way out of so, <laughs> so many things. I'm like, oh, I know if I'm just going to black it out, like it doesn't even matter. I don't even have to draw that stuff. And you don't have to draw everything all the time, not at all. But what it does do is the stuff that you know is going to be there, um, it's not so gross that it's hard to um, get yourself out of it. But anyway, so this is just a very disgusting way. Uh, these inks are actually looking really, really bad. But uh, so, yeah, so we'll just kill that. It's all on a separate layer, so you can always go back. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. And all of that, uh, yeah, like Michael's saying there, just one last exclamation point on this is keep working in pencil if you guys enjoy working in pencil. Don't just... I do think if you'd work digital, there's some stuff you can do obviously like everything we've just been doing today uh, that's really extremely difficult to do with pencil however working with pencil I think um, you end up drawing I want to say with more intent but your ideas tend to come out uh, I don't even know what I'm really trying to say it's just I know like when I was doing penciling uh, if I was penciling, penciling a page it's like not that the guesswork was done but there was a way to get to a final image easier, in a way. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I'm having a hard time describing exactly what it is that pencil gives you uh, that maybe, you know, obviously working digital, learning a new tool, all that stuff like that, uh, that goes both ways and stuff like that. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Do appreciate it. Thanks for sticking around for the extra like half hour here we're going. Um, if, again, if you're watching on YouTube, thank you so much. Uh, if you guys wouldn't mind like, sharing, uh, retweeting it on Twitter, anything, however you guys are following me, please uh, let your friends know. Uh, share it around. If like the video, if you enjoyed it. If not, that's cool too. Um, and yeah, so if you came to the show a little bit late, this is every Wednesday from 8 to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, if you guys are interested in the, uh, what's it called here? Sorry. The convention sketchbook for this year. I will be making a video for that. Most likely, well, Sunday's the show, so it'll be next week. Sometimes I'll or sometime I'll make a video just going through the sketchbook to see if you guys are interested in it, uh, so you guys can at least see all the images that are in there. And if it's something you're interested in picking up, cool. I'll have all that set up for you too. Uh, I will release an artist edition as well, so there'll be a sketch you can cut uh, with that as well. So thank you guys again so much for watching, um, and until next week. Like we usually say, you guys, keep reading comics, keep making comics, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye.